We welcome everyone to this workshop meeting of the Corsican ISD Board of Trustees. This actually it's a team building, so this is a team building workshop and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. Well, this is a meeting in public, it's not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby on the audience for guest form and follow the information on the speaker form. The, bowls, the board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is a responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. These are our core values. We appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. All right. We are going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance from our children at from, from Bowie Elementary. And I want to welcome up to the stage Isaac Gonzalez. Is it Kiasia Johnson, Allison Rodriguez, and Charlotte Stewart? Come on up. Come on up. Thank you for being here. Are you ready? All right, you're going to lead us. Start with the United States. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now to the Texas flag. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state, under God, one and indivisible. Great job. Hey, great job. Thank you. Start down there and shake hands. Good job. Thank you. Good job. Thanks for coming. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. 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 Yes. Yes. You want to get in the front? Front of the seat. Oh, get in front. All right. Squeeze in like you like each other. There you go. Yeah, y'all too. Yeah, y'all too. All right. Here we go. Oh, Marshall. One, two, and three. Oh. One more. All right. Thank you. Hey, thank you all. Thank you. thank you. And now we're going to have the invocation. Mr. Derry Johnson. Good afternoon. It is my pleasure to do the invocation. As I was journeying to here, uh, there was a passage of scripture, and I wanted to quote this before I pray because. This is a prayer that I pray every day. Jesus prays for every believer. In the 17th chapter of the Gospel of John, he prays a prayer uh, that he was not alone. And he prays a prayer for unity. Because I believe where there's unity, there is strength. And the power of prayer changes things. Would you bow with me in prayer? Eternal God, our Father, we come uh, this afternoon. We thank you for the foundation of prayer, and most of all, we thank you for your darling son, Jesus Christ, who implemented this prayer, that as the Father, and he are one, and that we too might be one, that we may come to the unity of faith. We're trusting and believing that you can and you will do just what you said you will do. We ask your blessings upon this school district, the leadership, Dr. Frost, and to the entire board, we ask your blessings upon each member as they give wisdom, knowledge, and understanding uh, that we have safekeeping in our children. And how we pray uh, this prayer of faith, because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And so, Lord, we teach us how to pray, that we may pray humbly and sincerely before you. And as we gather today, may it be a prayer of unity, because where there is unity, and there is strength. And may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, to keep our hearts, our mind, focused and stayed on thee. And we love you for what you're doing even right now. For we ask it all in the precious, powerful, and the holy name of Jesus Christ our Lord. In his name we pray, and the people of God said, Amen.
Okay. Thank you very much for coming. We appreciate y'all. So we have some audience for guests, and so I have to read this before I call you up, so just bear with me for just a moment, okay? The CISD Board of Trustees encourages comments about the district from citizens of the district, from district employees, and from other members of the public. Anyone wishing, wishing to speak may do so at this time. The board asks that each participant's comments pertain to public education and be no longer than three minutes per person. The board also respectfully requests the speaker refrain from mentioning other students or parent and staff members' names when addressing their concerns. Under the Texas Open Meetings Act, the board is not permitted to discuss or act upon any issues that are posted on the agenda for tonight's meeting. This means that the board members are unable to deliberate, ask questions, provide you with the response, or take action relating to your comments. If an issue mentioned is listed on tonight's agenda, the board's deliberation of the issue will be deferred upon the appropriate time during the meeting. In addition, the board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. Complaints brought by employees, students, or parents may be brought in accordance with our local school board policy. Each of these processes provided that, as a, that if a resolution cannot be achieved administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as properly posted agenda item. Copies of our district policy on public participation in meetings and filing complaints can be found on our website. If you need assistance with these policies or processes, please call Merrill Harrison in the superintendent's office. All right. So also I have three tonight. So I ask that you state, when I call you up, would you state your name and state your address? And then um, I'll ask Ms. Branch, the Vice President, to t time you for three minutes, okay? So Mr. Cornelius Hawkins, you're first. Cornelius Hawkins, address 1508 Brighton Drive, Mansfield, Texas, 76063. Um, I'm here today, first of all, Today, my daughter received, today two police officers come to my daughter at place of address for a verification. Uh, she's been living at the address for, ever since she's been in the school district. So I come to speak today and that happens all of a sudden. I find that kind of coincidental. But I'm here to address the status of the football program and what I'm hearing from several people and parents. Um, the culture out there, they say, is not conducive to winning at all, from the staff on down. I don't know if it's a new coach or whatever, but the parents are tired of losing, and they're thinking about transferring their kids out of district. I don't know about you, but over the years, Cross County is losing too much talent to other school districts, and they're winning with our kids. And if you're from Cross County, you would hate to see that. And I want to know, is there a solution? How can we go forward to get back to the winning ways and creating an environment for the kids to thrive? Because the talent is there. But if the staff can't get together and the coach, the head coach and the staff can't get on the same page, then how can we have a winning program? I'm sure everybody knows that we used to be the team that everybody wanted to beat. But now we're the team that everybody want to play on homecoming just so they can beat us. And we got to get back to those ways and find some kind of ways to get those kids interested and find the common ground and find the right person for the job. Once again, if I submit a resume and I don't meet all the qualifications or my resume ain't up to par, then I shouldn't get the job. I expect that. Once again, a one in nine or one in eight or whatever has preceded him here. So can we find some kind of way to get the program back to where it needs to be? Thank you. All right, Mr. Lance Johnson. Hello. Uh, Lance Johnson, 1117 North 6th Street, Corsicana, Texas. Uh, I am addressing some needs for the high school band program or the band program in general. Uh, first off, 
the transportation is uh, quite a problem for them, uh, which is causing large amounts of money and damages because uh, they're using U-Hauls to move all their equipment. So they're essentially moving close to $200,000 worth of equipment on U-Hauls that do not have proper securing for them. And it's causing some significant damages, which is gonna cause a lot of cost down the road. Um, most schools are moving to a large semi, basically, to move band equipment that can secure it correctly and keep it from falling over, breaking. Um, I know my daughter had her, uh, basically a xylophone, fall completely apart on the truck um, just because it fell over because those things aren't very secure. Um, I, I know that they're spending $6,300 a football season just on U-Hauls and drivers because they're having to hire three drivers and rent two U-Hauls for every single away event that they do. Um, so it's quite a bit of money which could be saved with one solution that would be great. All the other schools have them now, um, and it's just all around better solution for the program in general. Uh, the second thing uh, is band uniforms. Um, uh, the uniforms they have right now are about 12 years old. Uh, they're made of extremely heavy wool material. I actually brought one but forgot to bring it in. Um, very heavy. I think we had three students almost pass out after their last marching competition just from the heat alone. Uh, imagine wearing a wool jacket when it's 98 degrees outside, and that gets you where you need to be. Um, the new uniforms that uh, we've been looking at, uh, the cost is around $249 for a full set. That's the under bib, the jacket, the hat, the plume, and there's another piece that I can't remember what it is, um, which conversely to buy one new jacket of, to match the set that we already have is $350 you have one minute jacket. remaining. Okay, uh, it's $350 for only the jacket. So uh, cost-wise, it would be much more effective to try and get a whole new set, and it would be beneficial to the student's health in general because it's Texas and it's hot all the time, and the new uniforms are made out of polyester and spandex, so they're much, much lighter weight and a lot easier for them to work with. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. And then Mr. Ron Capehart. From Line Barger. Dr. Frost, Dr. Brown, uh, members of the board, my name is Ron Capehart. I'm with Line Barger, the delinquent tax attorneys for the district. And tonight is one of the fun parts of my job uh, because due to some uh, successful tax sales we've had in recent history uh, and collections on some other issues, I'm here tonight to present excess proceeds to the district. These are general fund monies that the district can use as you all see fit. These are uh, not already allocated in the budget, so it's general fund money that you all can use for anything. A little over $35,000. All right. Thank you, sir. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come back anytime. Come back anytime. But with a check. But with a check. Absolutely. Right. So I want to thank everyone for audience for guests. Do appreciate it. All right. We're doing team building tonight, so we are going to move into closed session permitted by Texas Governance Code, Section 551.01. Thank you.